All disease starts in the gut. Hippocrates. We need a good offense and defense, so I will briefly outline cheap, free, and easy things to do and not do to maximize your microbiome and immune health. Number one, get in harmony with a healthy, vibrant, good-feeling body. If you don't ever get in harmony with a healthy body, you will be playing an endless game of whack-a-mole with aches, pains, and other problems. Once you deal with one problem, another one will come to take its place. Does that sound familiar? If not you, maybe someone you know? I made another video that will teach you why this has been happening and how to stop the cycle. I cannot stress this enough. If you don't deal with this first, don't even bother with anything else. The video is called The Law of Harmony. It took 20 years and 3,000 books and seminars to make that one video. It's my masterpiece. It's on the same channel. I'll look for a link to watch it below. Number two. Besides antibiotics, the number one worst possible thing for the gut microbiome diversity is psychological stress. This immediately makes the unwanted microbes flourish and starts to kill off the good. This is why you always feel stress in your gut. It's your body telling you that something is very wrong. In all my research, the best method of reducing stress is by permanently rewiring your anxious brain using resonant frequency breathing which is a specific custom breathing pattern for your body that is several times more effective than normal meditative breathing. You can learn about this type of breathing in another video linked below. Number three, consume microbe and fiber containing plants. Dr. Rob Knight is a man behind the American Gut Project that he created in 2012. It has become the largest and most diverse study of microbes and microbiomes in the industrialized world. With all his data, he concluded that to maximize gut health, we just have to consume 30 different plants a week, and fresh herbs count as two. Having a healthy gut microbiome isn't about specific food quantity or quality or about being a vegan or omnivore. It's all about diversity. Besides being good for you, and besides consuming different plant fiber, it's also about eating more microbes. Different microbes grow on different plants. Even just a mouthful of any organic fruit, grain, or vegetable has hundreds of millions of microbes that your gut needs. Diversity is key. You also need to significantly increase your fiber consumption. The USDA recommends only 25 grams for women and 31 grams for men. and That may be fine for the body, but it's not enough to feed the diverse group of microbes. So consider seriously increasing your intake of plant fiber. Link below is an updated chart of high fiber foods. 4. Add other fermented foods. Kimchi is a Korean spicy cabbage. I cannot incubate many helpful strains that are in kimchi in a dairy based medium. They will only grow in a plant based medium like leaves. Remember, since diversity is king, the more diverse strains you add to your diet, the better. Kimchi has been reported to have over two to three hundred strains. They are not as diverse as my yogurt, but on a sheer number basis, it's an amazing bargain. Just add a little piece to each meal. See if you can't find a Korean restaurant or market that makes some in your area. I have links on the website. 5. Eat dirt and live. Being outside in nature and playing in the dirt is so good for you. This is also why people who garden live much longer and healthier lives. We know that touching, interacting with, breathing, and walking around all those plants and dirt help repopulate and increase our microbiome. The magic number is an average of 17 minutes a day being outside and interacting with nature to help repopulate these microbes that your body needs to thrive. These strains of microbes cannot be found anywhere else, and they are not located in any single supplement. You must interact with nature to get them. So part of your plan is get your hands dirty. Breathe it in. Play in the garden or play in other people's gardens. Eat organic produce from each cellar at a farmer's market. Don't surgically wash off organic or garden-grown plants before you eat them. That dust on them is microbe gold. All in all, feel free to vigorously interact with every park, farm, beach, plant, forest, body of water, pile of dirt, and furry friend you can. Dysbiosis. What to avoid. You don't want to undo all your work, so these are things to avoid. 1. Antibiotics It's true these can be life-saving in certain situations, but it can take up to a year or more to undo the damage that one round of antibiotics can have on your microbiome. 
If it's at all possible to avoid these, please do so. A study published in the Journal of American Medical Association provided evidence that the use of antibiotics is directly associated with a 200% increased risk in certain cancers. 2. Don't ever use any antibacterial, antiviral, or disinfectant soaps or wipes. Normal soap and water will do. You don't want to wipe out all your friends and create superbugs. 3. If you can help it, don't be born via C-section. If you or someone you know is planning on having a C-section or may have an unavoidable one, please check the website. There is a protocol to eliminate all of the adverse side effects of a C-section, but you need to be prepared beforehand. 4. Severely limit or abstain from alcoholic beverages, at least during rebiosis. 5. Watch out for hidden alcohols like mouthwash. Using an alcohol-based mouthwash twice a day increases the probability of getting diabetes by 55%. The microbes in your mouth are vastly important to your overall health, too. 6. Avoid all fake sugars. They immediately start to kill off the good microbes in the gut and make the pathogenic ones flourish. High fructose corn syrup also makes the villi in the gut longer so they are able to absorb more calories. As a result, you will gain more weight with the exact same diet. So avoid all artificial sweeteners. 7. Avoid cellulose gum. These are emulsifying agents that act like dishwash liquid that wipe out the protective mucus lining of the intestines. This allows harmful bacteria to come into close contact with intestinal cells, increasing permeability and resulting in inflammation that causes a whole host of problems like autoimmune conditions, worsened insulin resistance, prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, inflammatory bowel diseases, increased appetite, and weight gain. These are generally located in the following. So remember to check the label. 8. Try and limit your processed and deep fried foods during rebiosis. I understand these are ubiquitous and it's almost impossible not to consume them. But the good thing about healing your microbiome is that once you have a large number of healthy microbes in your gut, you will have the sort of biological shock absorbers that stabilize your health when you have some unhealthy food or a stressful situation in your life. Situations and food like that are less likely to make you sick or lead to disease. This is the whole point and thesis of this video. Overwhelm with good, so that when something happens that formerly knocked you off balance, you can remain healthy and stable. Conclusion Almost every non-traumatic health problem is directly correlated with gut health. For the latest microbiome hacks, check the website immunoexercise.com. Remember, you can't heal without harmonizing first. Watch my Harmony video to learn more.